mother figures, we want to honor all the moms and the special women in your life. So if you guys would, send me a picture of that special woman to michelle at weomaha.com. If you'll send those to me by Wednesday, we're going to do something special in the service next week. Let's see what else we have going. In VBS, we have had tons of different next um, generation opportunities here, at the, and that's because of you. We have been able to do things like our giant Easter egg hunt, Wednesday nights, um, confirmation just happened last week, and today we are going to recognize our seniors. And it's through your generosity that we're able to do these ministries. So thank you guys so much. If you're interested in giving, um, the information on how to give is both in your bulletin and on the screen. Now at this time, I'm gonna invite you to stand and sing with the band. I paid attention thank to the you. rest, by the way. <laughs> I, uh, please turn in your hymnals to pay, oh no. Wait, we don't have him. No, well, here's an, old, an oldie but a goodie. Victory oldie. in Jesus. Oldie. I heard an old, old story of how a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. It's who you are, it's who you are, 
It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. There's another in the waters holding back the sea. Should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears a burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Pretending me the waters. I belong to the state of my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? I will not be alone. Oh 
come what may in the space long And I know I will never be joy come every battle because i know that's where you'll be i'll count the joy come every battle stories they inform they persuade they entertain but the stories do much more they connect us to each other and to our father jesus understood this he used stories to help connect his followers to important truths his stories the parables Help us to make the connection between his teachings and our doings. And if oh, good morning. I'm Craig Finstead, one of the pastors here at the Water's Edge. Thanks so much for worshiping uh, with us this morning. If you're new and you're here in person, thanks so much for uh, being here. We hope that you'll come back and interests and passions that will uh, make us a better church. And we want to be a better church. We want to be a bigger family. So welcome. Uh, those of you online, welcome as well, wherever you're watching, uh, whether it's here locally in Omaha or uh, throughout the United States or anywhere in the world, welcome. And thanks for being part of our receive uh, a little brochure on volunteering, on, on serving. Um, I'm going to be talking about this a little bit later in the sermon, but you know, churches, volunteer organizations, nonprofits, uh, during COVID, it's been really tough, and you know, we. If you're married, you can do it with your spouse. If uh, you're in a house church, you can do it with a few people on your uh, house church. Um, if you got kids, uh, there's kids I saw greeting this morning. Um, they're probably sometimes the best greeters. You can do it as. Uh, families. Um, we have some really specific needs in the children's area. Obviously, that's a place that every church in the country is probably alone. We always provide training, um, you know, so you're always equipped to do this. And if it's not the right thing, we always say, you know, let's, uh, let's help you find the right thing. You're not. So take a look at that. I'd love it if you could uh, just maybe turn those in, take, uh, maybe put them in the offering boxes. Maybe that's a way that you can um, offer yourself uh, to God this morning. Um, we have uh, opportunities all over the church, and really want you to pray about that and uh, turn these in and volunteer and serve. And that year it won uh, the, the Tony Award for the best, uh, the best play. It became a movie in 1993. It won an Academy Award. It became a musical in uh, 2007. Uh, it was just here in Omaha a few years ago. Many of you have... Uh, see the movie, or maybe you uh, went to the musical when I was downtown. The, the show is called A Bronx Tale. So if you uh, just saw the opening scene and the closing scene, you, you know what the point of the movie is. Uh, you know what the point of the play was, and his, his wasted talent. And you, you've seen this before. Maybe you've experienced it. Um, and it's true. One of the worst things in life is, is wasted talent. The Bronx, and Probably set in the 1950s, early 60s, I'm guessing. Um, there was uh, two men in his life. There was his dad, who was played by Robert De Niro, flashy, charismatic um, local mob boss of, uh, of the neighborhood. And you know, C uh, actually really helped Sonny out at one point, and Sonny took C under his wing. And it became this tension between like, this kid like, uh, you know, chasing greatness and charisma with uh, the mob or you know, following the hardworking, loyal dad. Um, now, the story, it, it draws the viewer in, if, you, if not un, unforgettable. You know, the story ends uh, the same way it started, with, with death. Um, now, I, I didn't ever see the play. Um, I saw the musical just a few years ago, and I saw the movie in 1993. And I left the theater that night, and I remember um, bad in life, almost nothing bad in life is, is, is wasted talent. Now, Jesus, he told stories. We call these stories parables. Now, he could have just cut to the chase. You know, he could have said, like, the love of God for you is beyond what you can ever imagine, but he didn't do that. Um, he gave us the story of the prodigal son. 
he could have said, uh, you got to treat everybody with respect. Um, but he didn't do that. He gave us the, the parable of the, the, the Good Samaritan. He told us the, the parable of the, the laborers in the, the vineyard. Now, Jesus told three parables near the end of his life in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, so do you remember that YouTube video? Does anyone remember that YouTube video? Um, it was out about 20 years ago. It was called The Last Lecture. So it was a college professor, and I think he had like uh, pan- uh, pancreatic cancer, and they knew he was going to die like within a year. And he gave like this really inspiring speech, and basically it was like the best. I mean, he's probably in his 40s or something like that, and like he gave this really inspiring speech, and it was like the best of. Like I'm going to die pretty soon. I mean, that's where Jesus is in um, in Matthew uh, 25. The Last Supper is in Matthew 26. Jesus dies in uh, Matthew 27. The resurrection happens, and the the story uh, ends in Matthew 28. So the first parable in Matthew 25 um, is about um, ten bridesmaids, and the lesson is clear, like live with oil in your lamp, um, grow daily, focus on God, and that's uh, going to help your world make sense. And it's like Jesus is saying, like, the world is tough, and be ready because I'm coming back. Um, you know, that, that's the first parable. The last parable is about how to treat poor and marginalized people. And Jesus says, I want you to go out and I want you to feed hungry people. I want you to give water to those who are thirsty. To those who don't have uh, clothes, I want you to uh, clothe them. Um, if, if someone's a stranger, I want you to welcome them. And if someone's sick, I want you to care for them. And if someone's in prison, go visit them. And what you've done for the least and most important thing to him, God's children, uh, well and with love and with respect. And then in the middle, he, he gives us a parable about wasted talent. He's like, you're blessed. God's created you as unique. Like, you're one of them. You know, use them to, to shine God's, God's, bright, uh, God's light bright to the world. Now, today is uh, Senior Sunday at the Water's Edge. You're going to um, see a video in a little bit, and at the end of the service, you're going to uh, a stage somewhere. They're going to be getting a diploma. Some are going to go to college. Some might go to the military. Some might find jobs. But regardless, all their lives are going to change for the first time in a long time when August comes around. Um, they're not going to be going to an elementary school, a middle school, or a high school. Now, as we were planning this Sunday, um, I knew we were, you know, we we're doing a series on parables, but... Even if we weren't doing a series on parables, I probably would have picked this text because I think if uh, I was a parent of a senior in high school and I was three years ago and I will be in three years, um, this is what I would want God to hear Benjamin and uh, to have Benjamin and David hear. It's the parable of the three servants. So our first uh, learning from the parable of the three... So I did, uh, I think it was Wednesday, um, might have been Tuesday, I did these, these mock interviews at Millard West High School. So I guess if you're in the speech or the debate class, you, um, you know, put a resume to the interview. So there's probably like five of us adults that were doing them in the hour that I was doing them. And I would guess I probably talked, I did it for two hours because, you know, I don't do anything else during the week. I got time to do all these interviews. It's fine. I just work on Sunday mornings. Like, sign me up. I'll be there. I mean, I was just thinking about this last night. Every, I, I probably, I think I interviewed probably like five per hour, so I'm guessing I talked to ten kids, and do you know what all ten kids had in common? They were unique. Uh, the first one I interviewed, he was a baseball player, he's a senior, and uh, he was applying for a job at Shields, and he said he's going to go play for uh, Creighton next year. Uh, and she was applying for a job at Scooter's. So as a non-coffee drinker who's only been to Scooters like once in his life to get a smoothie, um, I was pretending like I was the manager of a coffee shop, and I asked her, do you like coffee? And like when I asked the kids that, you know, she makes some smoothies, and they drink these things, and there's one girl that was really reserved. Um, I could tell, the man, she was smart, and uh, she loved to read and write, and she was applying for a job at the uh, Omaha Public Libraries. And uh, there's a boy, I thought he was really refreshing. Um, he said he wasn't much into the school stuff. He loved to work with us. We're, we're totally unique. And, and we find that in the parable. Again, it will be a parable about the kingdom of heaven. Now he's telling another parable about the kingdom of heaven. So he says, again, it, the kingdom of heaven, will be like a man uh, going on a journey. So in the parable, God is the man who's going on the journey. 
He called his servants, that's us, and entrusted uh, his wealth to them. So he entrusts his gift to another two bags and to another one bag, each according to uh, his ability. Now, here's what we get from this. Don't read too much into, you know, one person getting five and one getting two. Um, What we need to get out of this is that we're all unique. We're all different. Can you imagine, like, if we were all, like, the exact same personality and we had the same, it's pretty darn boring. Diversity is a good thing. It makes the world a a better place. Now, I, I sat in the interviews and, you know, I discovered what Jesus is talking about here. I mean, you look at you look at a few of these kids, and a few of these kids, you just say, okay, this is this is the kid that has the five bag of gold. Um, you know, they just they're unique. They're just really really good, and well, they're nervous, but I can just tell that they're uh, um, you know they're they're deep and they're authentic and they're real, and we're all different, and that, that that's cool. And the, the five bags of gold people that are out there and they inspire us. You know, if you've ever heard Nora Jones uh, sing a said, I mean, these, uh, <laughs> these, these five bags of gold people are out there, and we got them in our church. <laughs> we got them in our church other than me. You know, you got, uh, <laughs> you got the woman that, like, lines all these people up, and they do, like, service projects and every year. And, you know, we got a couple of students around here that are two of the best golfers uh, all around. And, like, there's these five bags of gold people, and I think God gifts us them so that they can inspire us. But you know who inspires me even more? It's uh, some of the people with the two bags of gold or the three bags of gold, the overachievers. You know, they aren't, they aren't household names, but to me their stories are a lot more compelling. I'm thinking about the person um, who, uh, with, with courage and with valor, they are, they are fighting cancer. And they're doing it because they want to they be around, uh, just doing an amazing job. I, I see the person who achieved more than uh, anybody ever thought that she could. You know, so to me, that's inspiring. And that's, that's why gummers, we get to be uh, victors. We get to do more than people uh, think we could have done because, because you're unique. You really are. God, God does not make junk. You know, embrace who you are. Don't complain about who you're not. And if you, if you, if you do this, it's, it's not going to do you or anybody else any good. Now, one of your greatest accomplishments in life, um, one of your greatest accomplishments in life is becoming yourself um, to a world that's trying to make you somebody else. You know, I remember when I worked at the newspaper, um, I was volunteering in the church as a youth minister, and I really felt, um, you know, led to be into full-time ministry. And, you know, so you quit your job, you go to seminary, um, and just kind of like what Leander's had to go through in recent years, uh, you know, before her upcoming ordination in uh, June, you go through all these different things, and one of them is a psych evaluation, and you so uh, he told me three things I already knew, that I have ADHD, um, that I have a high level of introversion, and that I have depressive tendencies. Um, and he says that that doesn't make me a very good fit for ministry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so with ADHD, it's, um, you know, most ministers are organized. Uh, ADHD, it doesn't let, it doesn't let you be organized. Um, you know, most people like their pastor to be happy if you have depressant tendencies. Um, you know, that's not always going to be the case. And then um, most peers, is, I, I'm, I'm not organized. Uh, those of you who work closely with me know that. I'm not the life of the party. And if it is, it's going to be a really boring party. Um, and, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when life gets tough, I carry other people's stuff. And um, I'm not always going to be happy. But the ADHD, it does allow me to be creative. Um, you know, the depressive tendencies, uh, they allow me to be more compassionate, I believe, than you know, if I didn't have those. And I think the introversion it allows me to be a very good listener. And, um, you know, everybody's unique. There's a pastor down the street that's the exact opposite of me, and it works for him and it works for his people. And, you know, it, don't let the world um, ever tell you to become somebody. Um, become who God wants you to become who you've, you, you've created them and, and everywhere else. I used to have a coach that uh, I really looked up to when I was younger in life, and he said the will to win is not 
ever going to be enough. Um, it, it's the will the, uh, to prepare to win, you know, that matters. You know, you can get to the race, and you can have more will to win than anybody else, but unless you've had the, the will to train every day, um, you're not going to win the race. You know, the, the will to have a successful relationship means absolutely nothing unless you have the will to do the things daily that it takes to have a successful relationship. The will to, to grow means absolutely nothing unless you have um, the, the will to, to do the things to grow daily. Now, some of you want a will to have green grass in your yard so it looks like a golf course, but unless you have the will to fertilize and water and mow, it's not going to happen. Now, in Matthew 25, verses 16 and 17, the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and, and uh, uh, put his money to work and, and gained five more bags of gold. So what do you do? He put his money to work and he gained. That's, like the, that's the way things work. You work and you gain. So also, the one of the two bags of gold gained two more. So there's this group that bought a Norwegian dinner from me on uh, Friday, or they bought it like a couple months ago. I made it Friday night. And um, so meatballs are very typical Scandinavian food. I could have went to Fairway or Walmart, and I, they actually had this little bag of Swedish meatballs. Um, you know, so I bought like a pork butt, and I bought some ground chuck, and I ran it through the meat grinder. I uh, chopped up the onions and the parsley and the ginger. I put in the spices, the cream, and the eggs, and the butter. Uh, you know, we put the meatballs together, like form them by hand. And, you know, here, here's the deal, like in life, like we want to go to the store and we just want to buy the easy thing and do the easy thing and expect great results to happen. But it doesn't work that way. On the other side of, of, of hard work, like better than you get to the store because, you know, you, you, do, the, you do the hard work. We want instant gratification. Um, but gratification always comes on the other side of work. Now, everybody has talent. Like, we've already, like, declared that. Like, some have a lot, some have some, some have that, that talent to the fullest. I think of Paul in the Bible. Like, he wasn't overly talented. Um, you know, he had a past that was kind of, uh, he was dealing with, he had vision problems, he stuttered. There was some, some affliction that he asked God three times to take it away. And God said, no, you're better off with the affliction because I want people to see uh, my power in you. Um, yeah, maybe he's a two, maybe he's a three-talent guy. Now, do you know what he did? Like, he went out to Philippi, and like, he, he did all these amazing things. And he wrote letters, and these letters have become uh, the most read uh, I love what Jesus says in the, the parable in Matthew 25. Um, to the one who took the, the five bags of gold and worked and got five more, my good and, and faithful servant. So you got to know that success is rarely an accident. Usually, and like, you could like scratch out the word usually up there and like write the word like 99% of the time. It takes lots of hard work. You know, so for these kids that are graduating, they're going to go to college next year. Um, if they want to get good grades, that takes hard work. Um, for all of us who want to have good relationships, that, it doesn't come easy. It takes work. Like, uh, in your, you know, many of us, like, we want to go to the, the store and buy that bag of Swedish meatballs and expect greatness, but it doesn't work that way. You, know, you got to grind the meat and put in the spark. All right, so number three, uh, courage and risk are, are higher values in God's kingdom. We like comfort, don't we? Is anybody in here own a lazy boy chair? <laughs> yeah, you like comfort. Um, you like security. You got uh, alarms that protect your house and fences uh, around your house. Comfort and security. Well, the man who had received one bag of gold came. Mastery said, I knew that you went out and I hid your gold in the ground. Um, unless he didn't work, he just hid the stuff on the ground. And here it is. God's pretty compassionate. I'm guessing he's just going to kind of let the guy off the hook. Servant, you could have just, like, at least, like, taken this to the bank and pulled out there. We want the five bags of gold and the two bags of gold. They worked. They used those talents. aging much in these talents that God has given you. you know, 
Jesus says, like, the kingdom, the kingdom, don't hide your talents. God gave, like, you would think that's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, there's, now, do you know why I ask people to volunteer and serve here? And it's, now, that's number four on my list of reasons why, in order, that I didn't come to be served, I, I came to serve and to give. So, by serving is what we're talking about this morning. Um, you got gifts, you got passions, you got energies. You church a better church. We want to be a better church. We want to be a better world. Is to get work done. Like that's the least important reason that we ask people to do stuff around here. Like yesterday, uh, there was a lacrosse game, and David played. He plays for Millard West. We we're playing a team from Lincoln. Your phones and sound stuff to get wet. Um, but you know, every parent's worst nightmare happened. There's the kid from Lincoln, and he like. And, you know, on some injuries, like, it's just kind of polite, and, you know, everyone just kind of slows down, and everyone stopped immediately. The trainer and the coach run out there, and, yeah, I knew that David had just gotten hit in the throat. Um, and, you know, this has never happened to us, us before at this point. Um, you know, part of me wanted to run out there. I didn't want to be that parent. Um, and, you know, he's fine. Uh, you know, he ended up going back in the game in the fourth quarter. But any woman that's ever asked a guy on a date for any person who's ever made an investment for Nick just like that lacrosse player like there's 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 rewards that go along with the risk um but the parable says in, in other words you know be courageous and take some risk so here's what happens if you're unsuccessful the last thing is number four god gives abundance blessing and responsibility to those who are faithful so you got a little talented to those who are faithful. If it was a one person with the one bag of gold and he doubled the investment, um, yeah. so Matthew 25, 28, so, so take the bag of gold from him and, and give it to the one who has, who has 10 bags. This wasn't that long, it was probably like four years ago maybe, I think it was like when we were opening up the church here. I'd become friends with this uh, guy, he was like probably in his early 70s, um, he hired me to do it. Um, so we became friends. We'd go play golf once in a while. We'd have lunch. Um, I really liked him. Like, he was kind of unofficially mentored. Um, so I knew he was going to retire. Uh, got the invitation to his retirement party. And then a few weeks before the, that it happened, uh, she wanted me to roast him at uh, the retirement thing. Um, <laughs> and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Like, this is like a dream come true. Um, <laughs> this is like the one time a pastor can, like, be mean to somebody. And I'm there as, like, one of the granddaughters, like, did and I was like, I was like the second to last thing. Last thing was like the the video that they had of, you know, just his life, his work. Um, you know, so I get up there and I say, hey, everybody, uh, welcome out him. Um, you know, how do you know if he's lying? Um, you know, his lips are moving and just like all these like really moderately funny things I had to say about the guy. Um, you know, he took me in, he invested in me. I know he's done this with so many other people. Yeah, I'm just looking out here right now and. Um, I, I see a man who's given everything he has to provide for his family, for his workers, um, everything he had. Irma Bombeck, she says, when I stand before God at the end of my life, um, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and that I could say, I wish is Catholic and you know, this Norwegian press, and I just, uh, I looked at him and I said, well done. Well done, my good and, and faithful servant. You know, for these seniors, they got the rest of their life based, and I hope that they hear the words, well done, my, my good and faithful servant. You know, I hope for all of us, um, senior, like, regardless, um, I, I hope that God looks at you today, and I hope that God looks at you on that day, and he just says, well done, well done, my, my good and, and faithful servant. You're a talented bunch, folks. You're a very, 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 very talented bunch. Um, use those talents to... Uh, to live faithfully, use those talents to glorify God. So we're going to take a look now at our uh, seniors. Um, take a look at the video.
and my experience here has been amazing. I'm just super grateful for the family and the support, you know, that everyone provides at this church. So I love it here. It's been a really good experience. learned is like you never stop growing in your faith and there's always another step that you can take so it's been fun like seeing different ways that I can challenge myself in growing my faith with others. It's been a really strong, supportive community. I have people always praying for me and checking up on me. And I just feel like whenever I need anything, I can come to anyone in the church and they'd help me. It has shown me how much God influences your life, like all throughout your stages of life. Because um, I can see it a lot where it's influencing, where God is influencing my life now. But sometimes I forget how He influenced my life even when I was like a little kid and there weren't like big decisions to make. Um, and so every once in a while, like I'll have a kid come up and tell me a story about how, you know, God did this for them in their life. And I, it's just the little things that you don't catch on to anymore. It just reminds you that God is always there.
just thank you for supporting me as I grew up in the church and supporting me as I continue my journey through faith and other aspirations. Thank you so much for all the support you've given me. You've helped me so much with growing in my faith. I'm really grateful for all the opportunities I've received. Okay. <laughs> So this is the class of 2022. I don't, yeah, most of you, when we've, Water's Edge first started, you were preschool, kindergarten, you've been a part of our church for a long time. Some of you are, are newer to the Water's Edge, and, and, and whenever you came, we've watched you grow, and we've got to see you be a part of, uh, of your lives. We've got to come to your sporting events, uh, concerts, plays, those kinds of things, and we're excited to see where you get to go in the future. Uh, I feel like every year we do this, I, I have all these memories of, of confirmation, and I have mission trips. Some of you shared about those, and, and we're just excited to be able to uh, celebrate all that with you. So uh, thank you all for, for being here this morning. Uh, Pastor Craig, we wanted to offer a, a, a prayer of blessing uh, for all of you this morning. Courtney, girls, do you want to come up too, please? <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. do this again at the second service too. <laughs> um, so we had, uh, you saw, I think we had 21 or 22 students sent their stuff in. They're, they're not all able to be here today, but, but uh, we do want to uh, celebrate with them. Um, if you're around for a second service, you want to hang out, we'll have cake after the second service. Sorry, we're not going to cut it until then. Uh, but uh, you can celebrate with a donut or something as well. But Pastor Craig, if you'd... Share yeah, so this is the first of uh, many experiences you'll have the next few weeks of uh, people ooing and eyeing over you. And um, yeah, I know y'all, and it's something that we should do. You're just a talented group of individuals that I'm blessed to know. Many of you have served in this church, and you have helped us uh, make it what it is. You've never let your age uh, determine what you can and can't do. And I just, I see so much talent. You guys are going to do just... Uh, Amazing things on behalf of the congregation. I want to thank you for uh, your contributions to our church uh, so far. And we're going to pray right now uh, for your contributions to the church and the world uh, as you move forward. So uh, members of the congregation, if you extend a hand of blessing. God, I pray right now for um, the young men and the young women that <clears throat> do stand on this stage. God, uh, this is a time of celebration for them. It's also a time of transition uh, they're saying goodbye to what's uh, been so familiar to them and embarking now on a, uh, a new path in life, Lord. Um, God, it's a blessing to just know these young men and women, to see the, the massive amount of talents that you have uh, blessed them with. Um, God, I pray that during these next few weeks they can just get a glimpse of how... Uh, how special and how loved and, and how valued they are. God, I thank you for all their uh, accomplishments um, to this date. I, I thank you for their work in the church, the service, the, the, the giving, the praying, the, the relating, the connecting, the inviting, whatever it's been, Lord. Um, I thank you for that. And God, it's, uh, it's, it's our prayer that... Um, you will just do great things in them as they faithfully live in this world. And God, it's, it's our prayer that you'll do great things then through them as they, as they faithfully live in this world. And God, for them and all of us, let us uh, just hear those words from you at the end of our days. Well done, my, my good and faithful servant. So God, uh, for all the families that are represented, we pray for them during these times of transition. And Lord, we just uh, love these uh, young men and women, and we just pray your blessing upon them this morning, and we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to have the seniors kind of hang out up here for a few minutes. Uh, if you want to come up and, and tell them congratulations, wish them well, slide a $20 bill in their pocket, they'd, they'd all appreciate that. Uh, give them an opportunity just to, to catch up and, and just give them the congratulations that they deserve for making it this far. Uh, we want to thank you for being here this morning, and we will see you all next week here at the Water's Edge.